happening folks Gerald here aka jfone 90 coming at you with another album analysis it's been a minute but I'm back with it <laughs> for the Beatles fourth album called the Beatles for sale released on December 4th 1964 <laughs> so been a long time coming but um I had a lot of stuff June was way busier than I expected so <laughs> and it is and this was planned to be like earlier in June too but I'm glad I'm finally getting to it so um yeah time to get to the album i love i love the trajectory that the beatles have been going on so far so far um and i've been listening to a lot of the songs from the previous three albums that i've been doing so far um it just really getting a good a better feeling for the songs a better understanding because remember that's my thing where and i am trying this different where i'm gonna be recording this kind of two ways where it's like so they, they've been they've been really like I've been really leaning into them and really appreciating them more. And so excited to get to this album. But before we do, need you guys to go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell for notification. Let's go for the channel with 10,000 subscribers. Okay, now let's get to my grading my grading ratio, my specific way. In case you guys forgot, because again, it's been a minute. And and I'm go I'm I should also announce I'm going to be doing this with a lot more artists and albums than just the Beatles too. But and we gonna do another Beatles before we start bringing other artists in the picture. I, yeah, yeah. Before we start bringing other albums to the mix. But anyway, <laughs> um, my grading scale, and this is all my personal thing. If I give the song a one, it is perfect. I am obsessed. I love it, and I'm and I'm obsessed with it on first listen. Got almost want to hear it immediately after. After I, re I'm, mm, I will be playing it a lot. Two. I'd love it. I love it, which is, you know, that's still a great compliment. I greatly love it. I can love a song at first sight without being obsessed with it at first. At first, I can love a song at first hearing. <laughs> I can love a song at first play without being obsessed with it at first play, but still love it nonetheless. Number three, like it. Solid. You know, it's, it's, it's good. I like it. That works. <laughs> now, number four, though. Number four is indifference, which is a little dangerous for me because that just means it's kind of forgettable. I used to name I used to name number four meh, <laughs> but it's I feel like indifference is a better proper title for that. So number four is indifference. Number five, I dislike it. It just doesn't work for me. I can maybe understand how it. You know, that's just a me thing. Maybe it works for you. And number six over here is hate i loathe and i don't understand how you like it or love it <laughs> but i loathe it and i don't have many sixes with the artists that i love and respect and am willing to take this kind of time to get to know and but that doesn't mean that um they you know we don't expect them or anything it's just i don't expect a discography full of them <laughs> and there are plenty of artists that have discographies full of sixes for me that we won't discuss because my channel is about positivity so anyway <laughs> getting to the Beatles for sale in the first track off of it is called no reply with John Lennon on lead I love it I give it a two that was because I give it a two because I really felt all of the emotions with it and all of like there was a frustration level as he's like explaining it but also it's like you've been there and then I feel like that's, it's so fitting for today's day and age where we've all been left with no reply <laughs> in them messages, in them comments, in them DMs, <laughs> no reply. You said you weren't there. <laughs> but I love it. And I, you know, like I said, we can all relate. But I, what I really love too, but what I really love too were like the little outbursts of, I nearly died. <laughs> I can, I know, I know what it is. I know how it is. Yes. <sighs> so I give that one on first listen. I give that one a two. That one, and I loved. It was like groovy too. And then it would pick up. It's like I said, different levels. And I love songs like that. That just they have different you know levels to their groove and everything. And so I give that one a two. I love it. I love No Reply because I can understand. I have been there. I can understand. So track number three is I'm a loser with John on lead. And so, here we go. And so here, let's just check out. And so now track number three is I'm a loser with John on lead. And so, let's get to that. 
And that was track number two, I'm a Loser. I really liked it. I liked it, so I give it a three. I like it. Um, and it has it's, it's a three with the potential to grow. It definitely has potential to grow to love. But um, w- my favorite thing about it is John's voice when it would get real pointed and down. <laughs> I like that. I, I, that's a nice little effect there. And it's a nice way to kind of express, you know, what the song's about. You know, he's feeling down on himself. He sees himself as a loser for some reason. But no, you John Lennon. You know loser John Lennon. So anyway, <laughs> I really, I liked it. And like I said, I have the potential, I think, in the coming days. Because like I said, that, that's also why... Um, That's also me with album reviews where I like to give albums time to live and breathe and grow. Movies too. Me and movies too. Um, I wanted to, I also, side note, I've I've ventured, often thought about doing movie reactions and everything. But the thing is with movie reactions, it's like I take movies and TV very seriously and I like to let them grow in, in my understanding and interpretations of them grow when I'm removed from them, when the movie's over and stuff. And so the immediate reaction ain't always, it doesn't always stay. So, you know. But anyway, so track number three, Babies in Black, has John and Paul in the lead. And I am curious to how that sounds. Is it going to be the original Men in Black? So let's see. Let's see these Babies in Black. I dig it. Babies in Black is about a morning of a relationship. You know, she's, and it's like, what can you do? What can you do? She's sad because she misses you, basically. And, um, upon first listen, I gotta, I give it either a three or a four. For, I like it, but also I'm indifferent to it. Like, it was pleasant. It was nice, but I can't see myself, I can't see myself going back to that song, you know? And, Depending on the rest of the album, if I'm playing, if the song came on as I'm going down the list or whatever, I can't see myself not pushing skip, depending on what's next. We'll see what's next. Um, So I'm teetering on a three or a four. If this was tomorrow, I would probably have a definitive answer. But upon first listen, a three or a four. So we shall see. Uh, track number four, <laughs> as we speaking of fours, uh, rock and roll music led by John. Uh, let's check it out. Rock and roll music. Track number four. One, one, one. Obsessed. Love it. Love it. Love it. That was incredible. That was so. As it, you, I can I cannot stand. I could not be still with that song. That song was so much fun. Man, who was that was that was like that was straight up little Richard style there. That was so much fun. That was and I loved you could see you can hear the influences and you know from their favorite artists that that was great. <laughs> that was so much fun. Oh my god, I want to hear it again. I want to hear it again, but we, we we're doing this. I'm not going back. We're going forward. I'm gonna play it again after with like I do with usual songs. I give a one. That's a one right there. That's a one right there. I it was it was so fun because you didn't know what it was where it was gonna go next, and it was just so upbeat. And he sounded so happy and so. Oh my god, I loved it. I loved it. All the the guitars, the drums, everything was on point for that. Whew. Calm down for a minute. <laughs> Whew. Okay. And now, track number five, and now, track number five is called I'll Follow the Sun, and it's the first solo track led by Paul. That I like I'll Follow the Sun, so I, I it's funny, I kind of lead with my grade, <laughs> my first thought is my grade, I like it, so it's a three, but I like it was so mellow, so mellow, and it's like I can just, it's one, and they're, they're, they're the, these, these early Beatles songs are really good at just really good sunset music. It really great dance music, but it's like good sunset vibe music. And I'm all I'm a sunset vibe type of guy, so love that. Beautifully done. Beautifully done and beautifully sung, Paul. Whew, okay, so yeah, I give that a three. I like it. Track number six is called Mr. Moonlight, and that's also led by John. Never heard it, so let's check it out. Mr. Moonlight. Mr. Moonlight. All right, all right. So I think I like it. I like it. Because it's funny. I Big 
props for that start. I didn't expect that start at all. <laughs> it is funny. I almost want to give it a two just for how strong it started off like that. But the whole song, it just keeps at a nice pace. It's a great follow-up to I'll Follow the Sun because, hey, well, Follow the Sun, that moonlight, that moonlight follows the sun. So I like that placement there. So I'm going to solidly give that a three, but it has the opportunity to move to a two. I could say the same thing about I'll Follow the Sun as well. I think both of those... I can see me going to them and kind of having them playing off of each other. Like, really good, really good stuff. So, Mr. Moonlight gets a three, a tentative three for now, but a possible two for later. So, the next track is called Kansas City, led by Paul. Kansas City, hey, 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 <laughs> led by Paul. And it was written by W. Jerry Lieber, Mike Schroeder, and Richard Penniman. All right. One, that gets a one. That's an absolute one. That's an absolute one. They killed that. Paul killed that. Paul killed that. Man, that was great. That was fantastic. I hope there's a live performance of that that I can react to. That was great. Whew. <laughs> I love it. That was a definite one. That's a definite one. It got me, like, right away there. Okay, so coming up next, track number eight. It's eight days a week. <laughs> it's only fitting. I give eight days a week a two. I love it. I love it. And it's just it's just fun. It's a sweet love song. And it's just, it's not like too exciting, but it's just it's fun. And I love the instrumental. I love how it starts out and it expands. I love that. Love that. So yeah, that was great. That was really good. And I can see myself listening to that one a lot more. Coming up next, track number nine is Words of Love with John Paul and George on lead. This is the first time George is getting a lead credit in the album. So let's check it out. Finally, get some George in here. Okay, Words of Love is very sweet. I give it a three. I liked it. Um, it's another teeter-totter one where I could see myself either loving it more in time or moving down to it being indifferent. But I like it. I like it upon first listen. My favorite thing about it is their three-part harmony and how they were just down here. And it's like, it was it was something really sweet and kind of intimate about that. So I really dig that. I really dig that. And it was really unique, especially compared to how the other songs sound. So, like I said, it had a chance to stand out for me. But I don't, I can't tell on first listen. So we'll see. We'll see. And then track number 10 is Honey Don't, led by my guy, Mr. Ringo Starr. We have not had a Ringo solo track in a, in like two albums. <laughs> we have not had a Ringo solo track in a minute. So I am ready for Honey Don't. And Ringo, don't you disappoint me on this. <laughs> had me riding high on that first solo track. So it's like, come on, man. I need you to live up to that. And a lot of Beatles fans warned me that you might not. So <laughs> don't let me down, Ringo. Don't let me down. So this is track number 10 with Honey Don't. And Ringo, don't you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like it. I like it a lot. That's another three. I really dig it. I could see myself loving that one. I could see that. I could see that one either staying at like and elevating to loving it in time, or just staying at like. But I really liked it. What's fun? Ringo's voice. Ringo's voice. It has like a country twang to it, an American country twang, an American Southern country twang to it that I really like like almost folksy almost bluesy there's something about Ringo's voice that I I just dig I really dig it I don't know it's it's funny it's funny I I, I didn't expect it <laughs> you know I had never heard Ringo uh, voice solo before the first time I heard boys so like man I, I but I dig it I really like it I really like it I really like that song. And like I said, I only time will tell. It can either move up to love it or it can stay at like. I think I, I think it might maintain like. Uh, track number 11 is Every Little Thing, which is led by John and Paul. And so let's check out Every Little Thing. Every Little Thing is nice, but I can't see myself um, like going back to it often. So I got to give it a four for indifferent. But um, I really loved... The instrumental, the instrumental was my favorite thing. I loved the drums and the kick drum, but also like just 
all the instruments in it i i was really taken by the instrumental of it all but yeah that it didn't leave much of an impression and it didn't keep my full attention i gotta say so every little thing i gotta give a four so track number 12 that is i don't want to spoil the party and i hope me giving the previous track a four doesn't spoil the party that is led also by john and paul and so let's check out I don't want to spoil the party. So I don't want to spoil the party. I give that one a three. I like it. I like it. Um, now, that's another teeter-totter one where it can move up to love and or it could remain at like, but it could also, I could also see that moving down to indifferent. Um, but I really liked John and Paul's harmonies there, and I, it was a lot of inflections to that. It wasn't just one tone to I, I really like I really like Paul in their harmony too. I like that this song vocally it gave them a lot of different places to go with it and everything and it was fun and I I love the instrumental too. The guitar I liked a whole lot. But um yeah, yeah. I give it a three. I give it a three. I liked it. Continuing on to number thirteen. What you doing? Led by Paul. Okay, so that was track number thirteen, What You Doing? And I give that one, that one is another teetering one, but this time it is teetering between a two and a three. I either love it or I like it, <laughs> you know? But I, what I really, it's, it's funky. It's got a funk and soul thing to it that I really like. That kind of reminds me, like I say, of like something you'd hear from Motown or Stax. It's got a, it's got a really funky feel to it that I really dig. And um, I can see it being an earworm. I can see that one staying with me for a couple of days so that's why it's kind of teetering but it what it, it what stopped it from being an obvious obsessed is like you know i have those desire to like play it again and then what st what stops it for i don't know if it's love or like is i can see i can just i, I it's it's a it's something it depends on when i walk away from here and when i think about that song i think i think i i think i love it I think I love it, but for now we gonna let it be like it's like a good first date where I like you. There's potential there, so we'll see. And now for the final track of the album, this is "Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby," led by George and written by Carl Perkins. So let's check it out. Finally, we get a George solo track. All right, George, closing the album out. Let's see what George got in store for. Okay, I really like that finish. I really like that finish. And it was a lot of fun. I think I give that one. It might be similar to the last one of a two teetering on a three. But I feel like this one is more comfortably a three where I can't see myself quite going to that one often. Um, you know, and it, it's not quite the standout that, say, Kansas City Hey 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 is <laughs> or Rock and Roll is, you know. Um, but it, it's it's... It's like it's like the in between of uh, Kansas City and rock and roll, and then that one, and then and then from there you transition into Eight Days a Week or something like that. I don't know. Um, I liked it. We can definitely safely say that. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be a love either, but I, I it's the more comfortable I like. So that is that, and that is my full first listen of the Beatles for sale. My overall thoughts of the album as a whole, it is, as of now, as their fourth album of the four, it's kind of, is definitely my least favorite. I think as a, as a, so my overall letter grade for the entire experience, I think I'd have to give this one, the previous one, I forgot, was that an A minus? I think I gave that one an A minus. This one, this one was a lot of fun. But, in the grand scope of the discography, I can't see this one. And it's kind of what a lot of um, people already expressed, and I definitely understand. It doesn't feel like a standout. And, like, I don't feel like I know them and their musicology. But, that, but then, like, it's, they're the songs I really like here, I really do. But the problem is, if you can tell by my rankings and my grades per song... It doesn't compare to the previous three, so it is of the previous of the four albums I've done so far of them. It is my least favorite, and that grade I think would be is still passing. I think it would have to be 
a a B minus to C pluses to C plus range. Whereas I'm very curious. I'm probably gonna do an overall grading once I like done all of their complete albums and probably an overall ranking. This one and it's funny because this one is probably the one I've never seen the cover for things before and you don't hear about a lot of the songs. I don't know this one. This one. It doesn't leave the impression that the previous three did on first listen. It really doesn't. But I it do, it's good enough to where it hasn't disillusioned me. It hasn't made me disinterest. It hasn't made me lose interest. You know, I know that there's still more to go and there's still great things ahead of this album. So it it passes still. It passes. But and it's that thing. Only time's gonna be able to tell where the grades gonna solidly land on you know but so far all the grades i've given for the previous three still hold their places you know so we'll see in time you know where this sits with the rest but for right now on first listen it's passing i give it a b minus to c plus somewhere in there but anyway Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me your thoughts of this album in the comments, your favorite tracks, um, what, you know, if you were around the time of the release, how you felt about it, how you feel it compares to the rest of the albums and the rest of their journey. I'm curious about it all. So talk to me about it, about your thoughts on this album. And hope you enjoyed mine. My thoughts are my opinion. <laughs> so anyway, if you did, please go ahead, like, subscribe, ring that bell for notification. Let's go for this channel with 10,000 subscribers. Um, we can get there, but we, we can get there, but we're definitely going to need your help. So also please go ahead and share, share this with your Beatles fans and your, with your Beatles fan friends and all that who might also dig my style and interpretations too. And if you want to follow me on my social media, that's in the description below. If you would like to donate to myself and the channel, that is also in the description below and would be very appreciated. And you can also... Um, you can also join my Patreon, that's in the description below as well. That would be... And on Patreon, you're going to get early access to videos like these. You're going to get Patreon-only videos like these. And your requests, your messages, your comments, and all that fun stuff. They have a priority there. They don't have anywhere else because Patreon helps me live. And Patreon has some pretty amazing uh, Beatles benefits because YouTube blocks a lot. <laughs> so, without, so um, and, and that's it too. I'm trying something different with this reaction. If this is up on YouTube and there's no music played, the Patreon version is going to have my reaction to the music. Uh, if there's no music played, that's because YouTube won't allow it. So <laughs> just know that. And just, again, thank you to every single person who pressed play on this video. And beyond everything else, please take care of yourself and each other. I can Dang that I want it.